A quick reminder, I also have another channel if you are interested in Brizzy Cloud. Follow the link in the description below to learn Brizzy Cloud, focusing on getting you all up to speed with Brizzy Cloud for the beginner. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good wherever you are. JP here with Learn Brizzy WordPress. If my voice sounds a little bit flaky, still early in the morning, I haven't done my warm up exercises. Not that that exists. Brizzy WordPress 2.4. And the reason I'm looking at this, and I'm going to give you 10 features that's coming in these new fixed and improvements is that in the latest update to Brizzy, there is actually new starter one import demo layouts. And we have a video on that just before this one. In the blog though, on Brizzy, they talk about what's next and that will be the update 2.4. And I'm like, wait a minute, when was this update? And I decided to go and have a look again at this update, which was released in November 1st, not an update, correct myself, a beta. So for those who are part of the beta program, yes, you have the opportunity to go and play around with this. To me, who have been working in Brizzy Cloud for a few months now, most 95% of these are already in Brizzy Cloud. So I've gotten so used to them. And I think, you know, not having this in WordPress is a, Crime to humanity. Let's have a look at the 10 features, and there are many, many more. You can go to the blog and you can have a look at all of these new features that are in the 2.4 update. And, you know, just to say this, it doesn't mean there hasn't been any updates since this beta announcement. There's been 2.3 point something updates, etc., like the starter templates we just got. Just like I wish these guys can already be included in the update. So hopefully we see this soon, plus loads of bug fixes. Thank you very much in advance. Let's start. Number one, image overlay, long overdue. We had overlays for the background in blocks. Finally, we get it in images. Here I have an image. I select it, go to the colors, and now you will see that we have overlay here as well. Let me just move it a little bit. Let's see if we can get it now. Yeah. Right, let's do it one more time. Here we have overlay now. Very nice if you want to create a mood, select a color and drop the opacity. And this way you can apply more or less the same color to all your images creating a mood. Would be great if a filter could be included here, but that's asking too much. Nice little trick here is to instead of go for solid is to go for a gradient. So we have that pink and let's drop this one thing to white. And then what we do for the pink, I'm going to keep that a little bit more. And then on the white, well, it could have been any color, but I'm going to drop that significantly down to almost zero, almost zero. And what a nice effect you have there. And then, you know, let's grab this image here as well. Let's do the same overlay gradient. That one is on pink. Let's make sure it isn't on pink. Let's put it on pink, drop it down to around 50. Put this one on white, drop it down significantly. And look at that, how we have created this little style with just those few clicks with the overlay for images. Explained it. That means effectively that we have overlay now for blocks, columns, and images. Number two, columns reorder. And I'm not giving this in an order of my favorites, just 10 that I've selected. Columns, you could always reorder them by clicking and dragging them to an area where you can drop them like so. But now you have a much easier way to do that without screwing up your design in case you have a twitchy hand. Simply go to the column where you want to move it, click on the options, and from the toolbar, you will see these two arrows. You can move it left, and you see, you can move it right, all columns. That is so super easy and very convenient for using. Line styles got a very nifty little upgrade. Let's bring in a line over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Drop the line over there. Traditionally, we are used to having a line. Now, if you click on the line and go to the line options, you're going to see you have two more options. With the first one, you can add text in the line and with the third one, you can add an icon. 
So instead of using that what our clients say, I'll go and select it. And now currently we don't see it because the text is dark. I'll select the text. Let's put it on something we can see. Let's put it on white. And then we just type that in there, what our clients say. And then reduce the size. What is this? Let's put it on 14. Put it on bold. And then we go change the color to a gray. One request I have here for the Brizzy team is that if you have a text element, you have all these options of underline, strike through, as well as uppercase. But when you have something like text in this line element, you do not have those features. They'd still be great to have, especially uppercase. So if possible, please bring that in as well. Very nice little feature there. That is the text version. You can put it on the left. You can put it on the right, in the middle. And then you also have an icon option if you want to do that. This really helps you put a little bit of sparkle to your website. Column custom height number four. This one I really love because it gives me full control over my column. Now, when you go to column setting, you can see here you have height, which is the default auto, but now you can also select custom and you have control there with pixels, how big you want this column to be. You're going to find many places where you can use that. One area that I figured out how to use it, let's put it back on auto, is where you have this typical example with a little bit of an info box and a call to action button. And you get a little bit, yeah, can I please have my buttons all aligned in one horizontal plane and not like this ziggity zack. There's a few ways you can do that. One of the options is to go to settings and we have this content now and click here on this align option here. Same for this one. And space it evenly across it. Now you will notice though that the text here, they are spaced in the middle. So it's not ideal because you still have a little bit of that misalignment. My workaround to getting all of this to work perfectly is to bring in a column within a column. Let's put this back. And I know I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here, but bear with me. That one is already to the top and to the top. So what I will do in this case, and we'll do it quickly, is I'll bring in a column. And I know the purists are going to say, but you're creating an extra diff now, blah, blah, blah. Delete. And then I will grab this step. And the text. And now I can set this column to a custom height. And by doing so, let's put it at 300. Maybe that's a little too much. Yeah, too much. Let's put it at 250. Now I leave forced space there for the button to align here. If I duplicate this column now and I add text here, let's delete this one. And I call this one now step two. And I add less text here. You'll still have that buttons aligned on the same horizontal plane. I really like this. Gives me a lot of flexibility. And I've used this custom height for columns in so many places. Number five, which is my number one feature. I've been using it all the time in Brizzy Cloud, and that is column with control. Previously, if we had a column and you wanted to get it to a specific percentage or to a specific width, you had to grab the handle in the middle and drag it. And you and I both know that that sometimes could get very tricky when you want to place it exactly at that percentage and you just cannot get it. Now go to the columns options from the toolbar settings. You have all the control there. Start on the left, enter the value of the one you want on the left. If we call this 25%, then the next one. And we will make this one also 25%. Let's duplicate this one then. This will also be 25%. And the last one will automatically adjust to fill in the remainder, 25%. Absolutely master. You get responsive control for this for your tablet and mobile designs. Switcher now includes also icons for your tabs at the top. This is a pro element, which means it's a pro feature. 
If you bring in your switcher, click on your tab, tab options, and you can add an icon from here. No mess, no fuss. Number seven, a small little change to the rating element in the pro version, but also gives you a little bit more range to work with. Select it, go to rating, and you will see you have a rating scale of zero to five or of zero to 10. A lot more flexibility in that one. Number eight, scroll motion effects. And I know a lot of people will be super duper excited about this one. I'm not a big animator, but there's a time and place for everything. Let's say I want to animate on scroll this image. I select the image settings, and then I go to styling. You see the effects appear over here and then scroll next to entrance animation. If I select vertical, ensure that you also click on the scroll animation. Otherwise, you will not see the options appear. From here, you can select up or down. Let's say down and we increase the speed a little bit. And now there you go. Nice little add on. To a bit of entertainment on your site. But don't overdo it. It can be super distracting if everything on your page starts moving. Let's go have a look at the rest. Styling, effects, scroll. You have horizontal, transparency, blur, rotate, scale, mouse trigger, and 3D tilt. Let's add the 3D tilt. Opposite, increase it. And then let's go and have a look at how this is going to display on your page. This doesn't work on the scroll of the page, but off the hover of your mouse. Take into consideration then that this is only effective on a desktop display where people work with a cursor on a tablet and a mobile device. It's pretty useless. Number nine is reorder functions to a lot of elements. This includes your gallery, timeline, playlist, tabs, accordions, and forms. Let's look at how this will work in a form. I'll bring in a contact block here with a nice little form, this one over here. And I can click on any field and we have the same option here to move it up or down. Click up and it moves one level up, one more time up, and it moves all the way to the top. Last one, number 10, background options in blocks. Let's go to this block. Settings, go to the background, and you will see that we have size, now cover, contain, and auto. Currently, we don't have an image. What I'll do is I'll bring in a pattern. As I select this pattern and I add it, you're going to see that the pattern is added to the background. And there's an overlay applied. That's why we have that dark color. I can change that, and you will see very nice effect that you can create with that. Let's go back to understand it. Currently, it's set to size cover, which is going to stretch it all the way. You can put it on auto. And now you see it gives us the size of the image as I have saved it. Here, I can click on repeat, and then it's going to create a repeat background. I really like to use this a lot on many of my sites, that little bit of retro 70s background repeat or a modern style blocksy background. Very nice. It, it brings a little bit of design to your website and bringing in a small image and then put it on repeat. Very useful. You also have contain and that is also going to work with repeat. If I switch it off, you will see contain will stretch it all the way in the viewport height. Then you have the space here on the left and the right. And then to make sure that it fills it, you can click here on repeat. And this dancing lady is giving me motion sickness. That brings us to the end of 10 new features in Brizzy WordPress 2.4.0. Go check it out. You can follow the link in the description below. From me, JP, until next time, go well and stay safe.